a very warm and loving St. Mark's welcome to church this morning, uh, wherever you are, uh, presumably at home somewhere. Uh, it's great to, to be with you in this um, We are, of course, looking forward to a time when we can begin to come back into the building and um, the DCC are currently discussing when that should be. Uh, so you can hopefully expect uh, some, some news uh, of, of where we're at in the next week or so. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, Steph, if you want to get our notice slides up, uh, then we'll do the notices before we go into the, the, the more worshipful part of the service. Great, as always, uh, I won't labour on this one, but 6pm prayers daily, uh, it's a great time to be together uh, to pray for our nation. Um, so do join us if you haven't done before. Uh, it is a really lovely time. Um, if you want to go on to the next one. Uh, and again, by now, hopefully, you know our Lent appeal for the, the Jerusalem Princess Basma Centre. Um, I understand that, that numerous people have been contributing to that. Um, there's still a couple of weeks left to do so. So if you haven't contributed and you'd like to, uh, do please uh, do so. There's information in the notices as to how to do that. If you've got any doubt, do get in touch with the Richardsons and they will see you in the right direction. Um, next slide. Great, so Holy Week is coming up, the, the week before uh, Easter Sunday, and the team, the Hitchin team, for those who, who perhaps don't realise this, we're in a team of Anglican churches in the town, um, and we're going to be doing some Holy Week talks. So it's going to be two short talks with time to discuss the issues. We found in a recent Bible study that we did as a team that people were asking lots of kind of big questions about, you know, is it... Does God's anger fit in with God's love? What is the cross all about? Kind of really big questions around Easter theme. So we're going to be tackling some of those. Uh, each uh, vicar in the team, each clergy person in the team is going to tackle a topic. Uh, so if you notice there on the Tuesday, you've got uh, myself and Chris uh, looking at hope. What has God done? And that's going to be thinking about uh, what the cross means. Uh, obviously, Good Friday, we think about the cross. But what does that actually mean? And, and what is that? What is the hope of that? So me and Chris are going to give two slightly different perspectives on that with space to discuss. Uh, and that's going to end with Compline. So it'd be great to have as many people from St. Mark's along uh, to this Hitchin team event as, as want to. It's going to be on Zoom, uh, 7 to 8 p.m. on the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So hopefully um, some of you will be up for joining us as we wrestle with our faith uh, as we approach Easter. Great. Right, next slide. Easter Adventure Trail. So some of you will remember we, we had a, uh, an Advent Adventure Trail just before Christmas, which, which we had to keep changing and keep changing uh, as, the, as the regulations shifted beneath our feet. But hopefully this time uh, the regulations will not be quite so um, fast moving. Uh, so we are planning a COVID risk assessed, COVID safe adventure trail, uh, which will involve yeah, an Easter story, some activities. There will be the chance to to find chocolate or possibly find things that you can exchange for chocolate uh, around the grounds of the church and, and vicarage. And um, in some format as well, we will have hot cross buns. Um, again, all done in a, in a COVID safe fashion. Uh, so that'll be Good Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. I think for this year, it replaces the usual Good Friday workshops that we would do under normal times. Uh, and then this will be followed by a children's service at 4 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, anyone's welcome to come along, but it would be specifically aimed at uh, children. Uh, so do put that in your diary and come along to that on Good Friday. Great. Right. I think there's probably one more slide, maybe a couple more. Yeah, so our Monday and Friday reflections, this is just a reminder that if you want to sign up for specific reminders to get the reflections, uh, please get in touch with me or Andrew. Uh, everyone will still get the links in the usual Saturday link email. But in order to make sure we're not inundated everyone with emails and those who perhaps would prefer to receive fewer emails, we're making this one a, an opt-in. So do... Uh, the Monday just gone, we had um, our, our beloved former vicar here, Jane, uh, and now our archdeacon, she, she did the reflection on last Monday. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, and you'd like to see uh, Jane, then do, do um, go onto YouTube to have a look at that. Um, I think there might be one more. 
maybe even two more, I don't know yet. So the, the building's open for private prayer, Wednesdays 10 till 11, Sundays 12 till 1. Um, you can come along, sit quietly, pray. Um, so if you want to, to have a chance to come back into the building um, to pray in that way, then you're really, really welcome to do so. Um, so yeah, come along to that. Do we have any more notice slides? No, great. So that's it. Anything I've missed out, do check your notices that you get by email or paper copies. Um, and yeah, there's a lot going on, which is fantastic. So uh, we're going to pause for a few seconds as I hand over to Andrew, and he's going to lead us onwards in worship. Morning, everyone. One thing that uh, Nick didn't say is that tomorrow's reflection it is given by Nick himself, and I have had a chance to see it. It is lovely and thought in, uh, really thought inspiring. And Becky Barlow is reading for us. So I do hope you'll uh, tune into that, click onto that tomorrow, so any time during the day. And uh, happy Mothering Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. And we give thanks this morning for mothers and for all that they do for us, the bond that binds mothers to children. And it's also, of course, we call it Mothering Sunday, and that reminds us, though it's often forgotten, that it's the day when we remember Holy Mother Church, and we give thanks for our church. And in these troubled times, uh, we give thanks that our church life has been sustained throughout the last 12 months, and we praise God and thank him for all that's made that possible. And now we begin. Grace mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We ask the Holy Spirit now to come into our hearts and minds to still us to banish all thoughts of the outside world so that we can focus on our worship of God our loving Father. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll take a few moments now to reflect on the things in these past days which we wish we hadn't done and the things which we wish we had done. We lift those to God. And we say the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith, saying together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, this Mothering Sunday. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now our very first hymn which is a lovely way to help us to settle even further into our service. Be still, for the presence of the Lord is moving in this place.
Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Dedry. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now it's time for Tricia to come and read our gospel to us and to preach for us. Tricia, good morning. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and we've be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think on these things, open our hearts and minds to hear you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. You may have heard from Nick last week that we are undertaking a sermon series to explore the Apostles' Creed, which is one of the ways that we express the foundations of our faith. The Creed brings with it a sense of togetherness, and it connects us through time and space. Through time to the experiences of the Apostles who knew Jesus as a man and through space as millions of people across the world say and pray these words in unity, in one faith. Now on the subject of lots of voices, and I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, the creeds and the film I, Robot have a connection for me. Nick's gonna hold up a picture just in case you don't know the film. <laughs> Scary. I, Robot stars Will Smith as a cynical city policeman. There are thousands of robots that are normally individuals, but when gathered and saying the same thing, their voice is a collective, but slightly sinister one. In my days of challenging Christ to show himself to me, I would be in church feeling really good, feeling the love, and then a creed would come along. 
And we'd all stand up together and say the words together. And there in my head would be Will Smith running for his life with a bunch of robots following him. And this was not conducive to worship. Those robots weren't thinking. They were programmed to say the right thing. We choose to say the creed. It does us good from time to time to think about what we are reading and saying and believing. And it's certainly been crucial to the growth of my faith. What does saying the creed mean to you? Last week, we thought about God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. And next week, we'll reflect on Jesus, the Son of God. But today, on this Mothering Sunday, we're thinking about Mary. Mary, the mother of Christ, who is the Messiah. Mary doesn't come up very much in church liturgy. And so it's perhaps right that we give her some time. We're going to build a picture of the life of Mary prior to her encounter with Gabriel. And then I would like to address in a very low key way, the elephant in the room for many, the Immaculate Conception. And finally, a few thoughts about Mary, the mother of Jesus. In our reading from the Gospel of Luke, we are told about the moment that Mary hears from the angel Gabriel. Mary is still a teenager, born into a family that lived in Nazareth, and she would have been brought up in the Jewish faith. Scholars think she would have been quite young, perhaps 13 or 14 years old, which to us through a 21st century lens might seem morally wrong. After all, our own, ch our own children benefit from a long schooling and a much longer childhood. But 2000 years ago in the Middle East, young people would have taken adult responsibility much sooner. Life expectancy, if you made it to adulthood, was shorter. We need to see Mary in her own time and not through our own experience. Mary would have lived in a crowded home, spending much of her time doing strenuous chores. It was a physically hard life, supporting an extended family. One of the papers I've read for this sermon suggests that Mary would have been illiterate because working class women weren't taught to read and write at this time. But she would have heard stories from the Tanakh, which is roughly what we refer to as the Old Testament today. And she would have developed a sound understanding of the Jewish traditions and law. And the prophecies of the Old Testament led Jewish people to expect the coming of the Messiah. And Mary would have known this. So when Gabriel came to her and told her she was going to conceive a son by the Holy Spirit, who would be born the son of God. I wonder if she made that connection. Did she believe that she, Mary, was fulfilling the prophecy that she had grown up learning about? Whilst Mary seemed initially disturbed by the news, her only concern appears to be based on the practicalities, as we heard in the gospel reading. How can this be since I am a virgin? And this is the question that many people wrestle with, isn't it? And it is the elephant in the room to which I referred at the beginning. We can get caught up in words and meanings and translations, academic explanations, when we think about how Mary came to be pregnant. Today, we want science to prove retrospectively our understanding. Scripture tells of the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary so that she became pregnant. But the mechanics are left to us to decide. And in this modern age, it can be a stumbling block for some. Different translations use young woman instead of virgin, which some might find helpful. But if you find that conception without sex is just too difficult, then hold on to this from my lion handbook, which says, the virgin birth doesn't come up much elsewhere in the New Testament. And so we should perhaps take this as a warning not to place 
too much emphasis on the how. But I offer you this. We believe in God, the Almighty. We believe in the divinity of Jesus. He is the Son of God. We believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead. So to quote Nick, if God is God and Jesus is the Son of God, then conception brought about the Holy, by the Holy Spirit is truly possible. What we do know is that God chose a human being, Mary, of humble means, to be part of his plan to save us. He works with us to bring about change on earth. For me, I found that I could, in faith, prayerfully accept that the miracle of Jesus is real, accept the miracle of Jesus of which Mary was an integral part. Miracles can't by their very nature be explained by what we know in science. And a significant part of our faith is the acceptance of a truth that cannot be explained in this life on earth. So we move now to Mary the mother. Mary might have found comfort from the growing child in her belly and trusted in God. Or maybe she was overwhelmed by the responsibility. Those of us that have experienced carrying a child will know how vulnerable it can make us feel. With my pregnancies, I remember a sense of being vulnerable, but I also remember the gradual but primal growth of the bond between me and my baby. Sometimes feeling as though I was holding on to this immense secret, something special that my babies and I shared. It would put a quiet, enigmatic Mona Lisa smile on my face from time to time. And did Mary have that? Was she able to bond with that baby in her tummy knowing that it was not really hers from the beginning? Or was she so full of trust and faith in God that she fulfilled her role in confidence and with a certainty of God's plan? After all, hers was the biggest secret of all. Near the end of her pregnancy, we hear of Mary on a donkey led by Joseph on the way to Bethlehem, often portrayed by an image on the Christmas card or in a nativity book. An artist made the journey look really romantic with a starry night and palm trees, it looks very balmy and beautiful, but the reality would have been quite different. I said earlier, how strong was Mary? The life she led was physically tough. And even with her physical strength for Mary, the precious baby in her belly, the journey must have been a daunting and grueling prospect. The only time I sat on the horse was extremely uncomfortable, exhausting, and I found muscles in my body I had never found before. Today, it takes two hours to journey by car from Nazareth to Bethlehem. But then it would have taken around a week traveling 10 to 20 miles a day. It was rugged terrain. Mary would have endured rain by night, rain by day or heat, and it would have been freezing cold by night, and she would have walked much of the way. No Airbnb, no hot soothing baths to wash away the stiffness of a day's travel. But the basic accommodation that was available for Mary and Joseph must have been a relief. Nobody reports the details of Mary's experience in childbirth. I'd like to think that she would have had a quick and pain-free delivery. It seems only fair. But she would have been tired and low energy after a long journey. Still, she found the grace to welcome visitors, to honour God, and to love and care for Jesus. Going forth 40 days from the birth, when Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple for purification, according to Jewish law, they met Simeon and Anne, called by God to be in that place at that time. Simeon recognised the Messiah in baby Jesus and told Mary of the future for her son and warns of the sword that will pierce Mary's soul. Simeon is holding the baby as he tells Mary of Jesus' destiny. 
God has already told Mary that Jesus was the Messiah. But the reality was pushing home in a shocking way. And if that were me, I would have been fighting the urge to grab my baby and run. Mary and Jesus lived with the knowledge that Jesus would be taken violently. They had to flee and they lived as refugees in Egypt to escape Herod's massacre. Then when they were called back to Israel, Mary must have been full of trepidation, not knowing what they would find. But Mary still found the courage to bring Jesus up in the Jewish faith, to give Jesus a family life and space to grow and go his own way. A truly remarkable young woman. So next time you hear or you say the words, I believe in Jesus Christ, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Remember Mary, the young woman and the mother, and hold the wonder of her trust, her strength, her faith in your heart. Remember that God has a role for each of us to play to bring about his kingdom. I pray that our faith reflects the humility of Mary that we will continue to have hope in what is to come and that when we hear God calling us to serve, we listen, act upon it, doing so with the grace and trust of Mary. Amen. Amen. Lisa, thank you so much. You really took us into the world of Mary and into the world of mothers, which at least 50% of us don't quite have the experience of. And I thank you for that. And one of the things that you said right at the beginning was how saying the creed, and in our case at the moment we're saying the Apostles' Creed, binds us together in time and space. And I think now, and we're about to say our creed, of all those millions around the world who at some point during today are going to say these words in their own language, but with the same thoughts and beliefs in their hearts. And that's a wonderful thing, which we so often forget as we are just maybe a hundred or so here together in church. So shall we all, mindful of our connection with all our brothers and sisters around the world, say together our Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now Zoom takes us 500 yards to where Sandra is waiting to give us and lead us in our intercessions. Good morning, Sandra. On this Mothering Sunday, help us to be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. Loving Lord, make us quiet as we place into your hands those we wish to pray for. We know that you will love them with a greater love we can, could imagine. In our stillness, we are here with you, Lord, for them. Use us, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Mothering Sunday, Help us be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. Loving Lord, in our church family, 
you have blessed us with people with many talents, a variety of gifts. Help us to use them for your glory and for the benefit of all. We hold up to you our wonderful ministry team and give thanks for everything they have done during the last year. We ask your blessing on everyone in our church family. We all look forward to when we can all be together again, celebrating your love and being with each other again. Lord, please give your strength to all staff and students who have returned to work during this anxious time. We give thanks today for a safe return of a lady illegally deported to Kenya, but now brought back to settle permanently in the UK as a result of the tireless work of one of our church family. May the trauma of recent years soon be replaced by a new confidence and the knowledge that justice has been done. May this lady's Christian faith unfold and if she chooses to become a member of our church family, may we welcome her with such warmth that her memories of rejection will gradually fade. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this monthly Sunday, help us to be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. Loving Lord, we pray for all leaders of the world looking to build a better world, a more equal society, a more caring community, for those who long for a more loving attitude, a deeper knowledge of you. Give all world leaders compassion in their dealings with each other. Fill them with the power and the love and the joy of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. On this Mother and Sunday, help us to be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. Loving Lord, be with our families and friends today. On this special day, we give thanks to our parents. We call mother or father, aunt or uncle, for those who have been like parents to us. We thank you for our families our homes where we receive so much love, care and friendship. Lord, we hold up to you all single parents. Be with children and parents where life is not as happy as our own. This year, many mothers and families will be apart from their children. Surround them with your love, knowing that soon we will be able to visit and hug our families again when it is safe. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. <clears throat> On this Mother and Sunday, help us to be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. We pray for those who are sick. Loving God, we commit to your loving hand to all who are ill. We pray that you will take away their fears and grant them courage, healing and strength. Give kindness and understanding to all who care for them. Surround them with your healing light and all powerful love. Lord, we ask you to be with people receiving treatment in or out of hospital. Be with them and with their families. Lord, we ask your blessing on a work colleague of mine who has been off for many months after catching COVID now being diagnosed with long COVID. In a moment of quiet, we pray for anyone known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. On this Mother and Sunday, Help us be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. We pray for those who have died. Loving Lord, welcome into your calm and peaceful kingdom 
those who have departed out of this present life to be with you. Grant them rest and grant them a life that knows no end. Today, Lord, we hold up to you mothers and, mothers and fathers whose children have come to be at your side. We give you, Lord, children who have lost their mothers and fathers. Be with them, hold them, shower your love upon them, grant them the strength to carry on. In a moment of quiet, we remember anyone known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. On this Mothering Sunday, help us be the shining light of hope and love for others to see. Loving Lord, as we begin a new week, please guard and guide us on our way. Help us to serve as best we can our families, friends, and fellow human beings to show our faith by love and prayer for others. Grant us, O Lord, that we may be always faithful and true to you. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Sandra, for leading us in prayer. And of course, thank you, Trish, uh, for your second sermon, which was just as rich as your first. So it's time now for the piece. So at this point, um, if uh, Steph, you want to take me off of Spotlight, and if people want to put their, their view into gallery mode, and if they want to unmute themselves um, so that we can all see one another and hear one another um, as we share the piece in this strange and yet still wonderful way. I'll just give folks a couple of seconds for um, unmuting and what have you if they need it. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share a wave of peace with one another. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. <clears throat> so it's time now for our second hymn um, our offertory hymn uh, at this point in the service in, in days of old we would pass a plate round um, for those who wish to contribute financially um, obviously we're not doing that at the moment um, but for those who are, are willing and able to contribute financially, um, you are, of course, welcome to go to the website and uh, press the donate button um, or to do so through the banks. And as, as we try and remind people here, it is great whatever gifts you bring to this community, to this family, whether that's financial or otherwise. Um, so thank you, as always, for the gifts you bring. I'm just going to say a short prayer of acknowledgement of that. Lord God, thank you for the gifts that you have given us as people and that we bring into your service in St. Mark's. I pray that you would bless us as we seek to be a blessing to one another and to our community. I pray that we as the church would use those gifts that people bring well. Amen. Amen. So now it's time for our second hymn, Firmly I Believe and Truly.
in a moment we will um, share in a manner of speaking the, the Eucharist together, but I'm reminded of a conversation I had earlier this week with John Richardson, um, that song, Firmly I Believe, and we've, we've read the creed today, which speaks of our, our kind of firm beliefs. And, and John said to me earlier this week, is there, is there room for doubt in all of this confident proclamation of things we believe? Is there room for doubt? And of, of course there is. And I just wanted to take a moment, uh, given the title of that song and the content of our sermons, to, to remind people that doubt isn't the opposite of faith. Doubt is, is a part of the faith we have. And it's through our doubts, through our questions that we wrestle with God, that we go deeper into faith. Um, so if you're sitting during these sermons thinking, yeah, but I've got so many questions, so many doubts, that's great. That is absolutely a part of, of why we do what we do and the faith we have. So don't be afraid of the doubts you have. Embrace them, wrestle with them. Um, it's all part of following God together. I, I have doubts on a regular basis. And when you see some of the things that happen in this world, how could you not doubt? God. And if you look in the Bible, um, particularly the book of Psalms, it's full of people doubting God, asking, is God there at all? So, yeah, this is a space where doubt is allowed and encouraged. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to say that before we say more words of great faith uh, in the Eucharist. Let's just take a moment of quiet. And so holding our doubts and our faith together, we say the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outboard may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with St Mary, St Mark, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And so draw near with faith. And though we do not gather in person, yet still by the power of God, Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Do this in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. And so we pray together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me, since I cannot now receive you physically through the bread and cup, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. The body of Christ is broken for us. And the blood of Christ is shed for us. Amen. Amen. We sing together our final hymn, In Christ Alone.
And let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And that brings us almost to the, the formal end of our service this morning. But do remember that you're welcome to join us on a different Zoom link uh, for our after service coffee this morning to have a chat with one another, uh, share a bit of life with each other from afar. And I'm very grateful to Trish this morning for her sermon. And in addition to being thankful for my own mother, um, I am certainly going to be reflecting on Mary, mother of Jesus, during this week. And I hope that all of us, whether we are mothers in the biological sense or not, can, can learn something and, and model something of her faithfulness and her nurture as we go about our weeks this week. So Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up the cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.